So, 13 games, right? 13 games. Um, that's a long season. You know, that, that kind of – that. but but that's an opportunity for younger guys to practice and get some – get some. maybe you brought some freshman well, team the, up. Or, the 2000 team were freshmen. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, they, that, yeah. Those, those guys were our scout team. Remember okay. that, man? Yeah, we, were, I would say we had about Brad six or seven. And, we had about and, six and or seven. And those guys were – Tondi and uh, – uh, they, they were our scout team because I gave them the option, you, you know – you could finish the year with us but you know you're going to come and you're going to be our scout team yeah. um, a couple of them dressed for the state game yeah that wanted to dress mm-hmm. they they sat on the sideline and and froze <laughs> <laughs> um so going into your senior year what uh were you maybe going through the recruiting process or were you what, what were kind of your thoughts for your senior year um, um I, I, the big thing is the recruiting process was always involved like i had my offers um at that time majority of my offers came the, the in between my um end of the season my junior season and mm-hmm. beginning of my senior season um but I think the dynamic of the team was different um, with the the younger guys because we had um, we had older line mm-hmm. that like we, like I said the uh, we pretty much had a lot we had probably had like four seniors on the line mm-hmm. but all the skill was like young so we like Brad um, him and, and Tony Smith was battling for quarterback um, Marcus Patton was a sophomore Robert Drake was a sophomore um, only seniors I had I think in the skill position was Aaron Robbins, who was like a, they alternated at yeah, fullback yeah. and Brad Amrich. And he got hurt early in the season. He broke his collarbone. Mm. So we had, so my, my role was more of, uh, of really helping them out and, and playing and, and, and helping them develop as players. Um, and I, I look back, like even at, at practice, like I would get a few reps but then a lot of it was just trying to help them out, like, hey, do this, do this, and and, and on the field pointers because it was you have your coaches, but then when you have the opportunity to have players help you out, like when I got to the NFL, you have older veteran players help you out and say, hey, do it this way, this will help you out. And I think that really allowed them to feel comfortable. And with me playing in my position, it took a lot of pressure off of them mm-hmm. to really because – it was my team, not theirs. They didn't have to step up and try to be superstars. They try. They they needed to be that support system and, and learn how to play the game. Yeah. And so that year, um, you guys go seven and two. Um, and we were talking. East closed at that time. Yeah. East closed. That's why we we only played the nine games. Okay. So like I said, nobody went play us, and I remember like we. It was either like drive down to Cincinnati to play a game, and yeah, and I remember Coach Sam was like, we called a couple of different people, like they was like, we don't want to play y'all, because yeah. they don't, they didn't want to be the team that ended up losing, and it was a possibility just because our success the year before. Yeah, yeah I, I called Dick, and Dick couldn't even find me a game. <laughs> no, oh, then there was no, then there was no game to be had. Yeah. <laughs> Or he might have found found one, but they didn't. Yeah, they but didn't he scheduled it for himself. <laughs> yeah, I think like Cincinnati, like the closest game was like in Cincinnati. Yeah, and it was like the a- actually, resource. actually, actually, I'm almost positive that Ignatius went in a playoffs. <laughs> I, 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 so I am. when did you know? When did you know you had to find a game? Was this the off season or did? Because I, I can't remember when East the timeline of them closing. Um, yeah, did you I, know? I, I, yeah. No, I think it was kind of sprung on us because I can remember meeting with the principal and the AD and and trying to figure this out, um, trying to get a game or not get a game and what we were going to do. Uh, but, but 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 we we thought of but one of the factors was you know the playoff imp- implications. You yeah. know, was this going to hurt us? And then when we found out. That that's why uh, we we felt a loss would hurt us more than um, that's why I wouldn't play I wouldn't play Ignatius I yeah you know uh, the 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 divisor right you you got a nine game divisor instead of the ten game yeah. so it didn't it didn't impact yeah, you. I mean we played nine the year before and right. we still made the playoff yeah. that year because right. and it was funny because my 
but, sophomore year in, in 96, we was the fourth rated team in the in the, the yeah, region. At 10 and 0. At 10 and 0. <laughs> we was number two in the state, but we was fourth in the region. Right. Um, with that, then the year before, we ended up being third with East being last, even though we beat East playing the seven games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry, the nine games. We was we was third in the, the region. So mm. it still gave us opportunity. But our thing is we ended up moving to Division two my senior year from mm. Division three, yeah. And I think we yeah. had a – it was a lot of tough Division two teams in the area. And then only being four made the playoffs. So it was uh, – uh, turned out that we just was on the cusp of – Yeah, we just outside. missed. We just missed. Yeah, um, and I remember, so that would, that had been my first year, and I remember, the one thing I remember is you being used everywhere. And I do, I do remember you being a tailback, and Ron, you said you mentioned earlier, being a tailback and throwing sprint out and, and stuff like that. So just trying to be creative and, and take some heat off of those younger guys, um, you know, to, 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 to make things work and make it go a little bit. Yeah, you were under center for for the Struthers game. That's when Brad hurt his finger oh. or something, and he came out of the game. And you know, it was like I, he he wanted he wanted to sit. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I told him I said, "Well, if you, if if this is your call, if you can go, you know, go. You know, Doc says you're okay to go, and this is this is the line that you got to cross here." And you know, and then he went back in, you know, and I never heard another word from him. <laughs> um, so just kind of thoughts on uh, on that year, on the on the your senior year. Um, you know, do you have any any thoughts on just how that progressed or, or went? Um, I I think it was just it was an interesting year as a player. Like I said, I think there. It wasn't no pressure on me. I mm -hmm. think that was the big thing. Um, and and surprisingly, I only play. I personally only played eight games because I actually sat out the ran game because I had a um, a knee contusion. Hmm. So I actually sat out and I played eight games that year. Um, but like the games, I I think I, the joy that I got it was like I said was being opportunity to be a leader because like my my sophomore year we had senior dominated team. My my junior year, everybody was scrappy. Like everybody was just together. Like it was my brother's team, but everybody was together. So this going into my senior year, it was like, hey, this is Anthony's team. Then we, had, of course, we had our linemen and everything else um, th that played the last couple of years. So it was uh, an opportunity for me to be a true leader to really help. The, the younger guys grow and everything else and, and also with me it's also switching back to my position because I played running back my whole life. I only played receiver for two years mm. my sophomore and I stayed my junior year because of course we had a, um, a good quarterback so going back to that position and, and readjusting to be a full time running back um, I think that was just another opportunity for me to grow as a player. Yeah. Um, and so you go on to college to play um, on the defensive side, I guess, and that's something that we didn't necessarily talk a lot about when people, you know, Kilo and Dykes was on here and he was talking about how you kind of influenced him, and, and usually it's from the offensive side. Um, I guess, uh, were you looking to go defensively? Is that something that you wanted to do or was the opportunity? Um, it was opportunity because when I, when I got to college, um, even like when I went to camps, during high school, like I always did offense stuff, and I I did um, defense stuff. So like, I played safety in high school, um, but with me being the defensive player of the year, Division two defensive player, well, co-defensive player of the year, my uh, my senior year, it, it it put me on the map to to play defense. When I was getting recruited, I think a lot of uh, a few schools wanted me to play, like Pittsburgh wanted me to come in and play corner and probably uh, and have opportunity to start at corner. Uh, I think I talked to West Virginia. They was talking about possibly playing both ways because that was like right in that, that uh, Champ Bailey, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Charles Wilson era yeah, yeah. of, let's uh, say, if you can get those type of players that can, that can help on both sides, um, then 
definitely would be an asset. Um, but like when, when you look at my high school career, being offensive player of the year, my for uh, Division three, my junior year to my senior year being defensive player of the year, I think it was just it's it was just an opportunity to be recruited as as an athlete. So like when I got to to Louisville, we had freshman camp. So like the first day I went to like in the morning I went to receiver, then I went to safety in the afternoon, mm -hmm. then I went to running back the next day, <laughs> then I went to quarterback in the afternoon. So the I mean corner. So yeah, I played four different positions like the first two the first two days of practice. So each position I was like and when I came in though that's where on my visit I met with all the all the coaches. So they didn't they didn't have no clue also where to put me at until like maybe three, four days into practice and it was like, hey, we're short at corner. Do you wanna play corner like corner? I was like, sure. I mean I mean so that just was the opportunity that came about. So I embraced it and what and what made you pick Louisville? Um one thing I always tell tell people like with back then I was not aware of how the the um, recruiting process worked. Um, I knew that I was a highly recruited player out of Ohio. I think my senior year I was like rated like the fourth, fifth mm. um, best recruit in Ohio. But not knowing that um, how it works where if you don't like accept offers, they can give them to the next person mm -hmm. cuz they, they so and I said through the recruiting process I think that I was just I didn't say I was naive but I just didn't understand how the process worked um like I knew I liked Ohio State I didn't want to go to Ohio State mm -hmm. like I didn't I wasn't used to s sitting for 2 3 years in order to play and I think that wasn't an interest in me so like I wanted to go to Michigan I went to Michigan camp a, a couple times I mean the coach from Michigan came to um, the state championship game. I think just with with me having a non-interest in Ohio State, that kept Michigan away. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, and I remember um, playing basketball, and I was like, okay, I've been to this school, I've been to this game, I've been here. So I didn't take a lot of visits. I didn't really only visit I took was Louisville. So it got mid of January, and it was called a couple of schools, and it was like, hey, uh, well, we don't have no more offers scholarships left somebody was taking them so like all my like top five which was like West Virginia Syracuse Pitt and stuff they was like no so and I tell people I, was, I swear I, Louisville called and I told them I wasn't interested <laughs> then I think one day they called and I was like hey what's going on then the coach flew up there like the next day came to basketball practice um watched me at basketball practice and was like hey you gotta you gotta offer come come down and I think I came that, that was like a week before signing day, I went down that weekend. I liked it. Ended up signing with them. So I just really think it was meant for me to be there. Yeah. And then Ron, like, what? Uh, how did it go on your end with with um, just some of that that process with with uh, maybe just some of the guys that have come through? <laughs> you know, that's I. I, I I don't know how it's it's changed over the years, but that's um, kind of really overstated. I mean, they come through, and then what they do with the with the recruit is kind of like they they don't go through you, mm -hmm. they don't go through the coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, they that's that's that, that's that's all their their business in. Uh, so they come through, and you you make your recommendation. They tell you that they're interested. You relay that to the kid, and then the process kind of works itself out. Um, yeah, you know, you you. My, I always felt my job was to make them ex the kids accessible as possible. Get their name circulated, their film circulated as much as possible, and you know, let the chips fall where they may. Um, and and if a kid had a specific interest and wanted me to, you know, pursue that for them, you know, I I would do whatever the kid would ask. Um, but but it's it, it it's it's it was 
an individual process, like yeah. I said, player and, and, and the recruiting coach. Yeah, I was like, even with that, I, when, you, when you get into, like, okay, where you have the um, smaller school, like D- Division two or player type of thing like that, where it does go through more through the coach because they're, they're making yeah. the initial phone calls. Mm-hmm. They're getting more information. Like, when you're looking at more top recruits, like I said, as when if you're a top five recruit in, in the state, like, once they make the initial contact with coach, after that, they're like the phone calls come to me, phone calls come to my parents, and right. everything else. So like they they they're really hands off, and like when like coaching have to make calls to to nobody because like when you have like twenty some offers, yeah, like, sure, it just right, come, right. Yeah. it comes in. Yeah. So it's yeah. like hey, yeah. what's he might he might okay, what's going on with this and and who called or who talked to or he'd tell me who stopped by and uh, and everything else. But like with the letters, the the calls and everything else, like once that hit that that level like I said it was just and, and that's okay. when the recruiting services were coming in and saying well you know and they would come in and say well we'll m- make a highlight film we'll i says okay you know we do that uh we'll make um, um a profile i said we we do that I said, and they wanted, I think at that time it was $100 or maybe it was more than that. But anyway, um, that's what they would charge the kid. And um, I said, well, you, are you going to guarantee him a scholarship if, if they pay that fee? Oh, well, we can't do that. I said, well, you know, what's the point? Yeah. Well, they, they kind of phased themselves out of it. Yeah, recruiting definitely changed over the years. I mean, like, when you, yeah, there was no huddle. It was, it was literally yeah. Yeah. Sin, and, sin. and now everybody's going yeah. to camps. I mean. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't <clears> like, and I tell you, when I went to camp, you was there for camp. Like, we was there for four days, helmets, and you're you're learning, getting instruction, and competing. You're not going to, and like. Auditioning. Yeah, you're not testing for the 40 you're not testing for three like we did the 40 like the last day it wasn't a one day hey i, I did some one-on-ones i did the 40 i did the mm-hmm. shuttle and in, in, in four or five drills like you're there eating breakfast lunch dinner you're there and and it wasn't no huddle it was actually send game tapes right like right. send actual game yeah. tapes and yeah. for like said the coach would come and, and and go in an office and sit and have to sit and watch the tapes to, to see what was going on. So uh, I think a lot of it had to do with those coaches that came in knew what type of player they was getting. Mm-hmm. Like now, I can look good in the camp, I can look good on here, or I, I, I had the, the size and measurables, so I'm getting the look where it was all on tape before. Now it was more measurables outside of the game where a lot of people get recruited now. Mm-hmm. They, they they would the, the the common terminology was they needed to see the kid on the hoof. Got to, I got to see him on the hoof to 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 make a decision. It, it, now that go this goes back to when I was at Syracuse um, for two years. That uh, w- when you recruited that you know you had to go and check the kid out. That's why Red when I played at Cheney, Red used to say. Hey, we got some guys coming in. Wear an extra sweater tomorrow, or you know, make sure you grip his hand. Yeah, and, uh. yeah cause I remember Notre Dame wanted me to come, and they was like, "We'll offer you a scholarship if you like." I like Notre Dame as a kid, um, and it was like, "Well, if you come to camp, then we'll offer you a scholarship." And I was like, "Well, I'm not going to drive. Have my parents drive seven hours to to go to camp mm-hmm. just for." just for you to tell me I got a scholarship offer. Like, if, if it's, if you want to do it, go ahead and, and, and pull the trigger. Because like I said, I didn't, my parents didn't have the means to drive, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to, and take off time on work and everything else and pay for hotels and a lot of stuff they do now that is, didn't happen back then. And I was like, unfortunately, like I said, I like Notre Dame. I probably wasn't going to go to Notre Dame, so I wasn't worried about it. So I was like, that's well. a That's a pretty bold statement. I mean, I mean that, like, for a 18 year old kid to make you know what i mean like that's a they, they put you in a tough spot mm. oh absolutely and, and i mean because they feel it's notre dame it's notre dame sure. everybody like I, I appreciate it but i was like i don't have the means just to come out there just for you to tell me walk on campus to say hey here's a scholarship yeah like yeah that'd be that'd be tough to like i don't i mean to say that 
you know. I mean, because you, you feel like now people might drive across country, fly across country, but like I said, you, you, your mom is, is working, your dad is working, mm-hmm. and, and now to take off for two, three days to, to drive it yeah. out to, to yeah. Indiana, I mean, if they, they if they want you, they're gonna make you. Yeah, they. Really, I mean, if they really want, so I was like, they just showed me the interest. So I was like, well, um, I'm I'm alright with it. I mean, <laughs> and, and I mean, I'm okay. Like I said, it's it's never it's never an issue. But I mean, I just think like I said, recruiting is a lot different now, and, and it's more of a what you look like and, yeah. and and potential besides what type of player that you're actually getting. So you you go to Louisville and great career. Um, and I was kind of just looking some things up. Knowing we were getting together today, and um, Conference USA, eighteen interceptions. Do you still hold that that mark? Possibly. I believe that one got overtook in Matthew maybe a couple years ago. Okay, but so for a while you you held that record. I mean that's that's impressive. Yeah. So I think it's still I still have I think I have a conference record for the single season. I think the the. If I'm not mistaken, the single season still might be there, but okay. the uh, career might have been broken. And then the career for uh, Louisville, yes, that's still that's still yeah, yeah. Um, and then I watched it. it it's the uh, YouTube video. Maybe we'll maybe we'll cut that up and, and put it up with this episode. But just when you're honored for uh, uh, getting in the ring, and they 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 not retire. We were talking about this before, but they honor your number. Um, you know that'd be pretty pretty neat experience. Oh, it was it was a great experience, and just knowing that like when you go like your name is always a part of that school. Like when I go to Cheney, my name is always going to be synonymous with that school. Yeah, and I think where um, with me as a player, I went into it was another opportunity, just like I went into Cheney to go into there as the person that's not known. So the person who still had to work, because like when I had my defensive back room when I first went there, they was starters. They was two year starters at at corner. So now I'm the like I said bottom of the total pole again. And the one thing that I did, um, I I was big on history because you had uh, Ray Buchanan. Mm -hmm. um, He had like. Eight interceptions in one season it was like, uh, and going to NFL, he was on. His name was up there. Sam Madison had the record before that nine, so those was like the top two interception leaders, and they both was on the on the Ringer Honor. So it's like that was something for me to aspire to be, to try to get their numbers. Like that's the same thing. Like at, at Cheney, I always used to tell Coach Burris, I don't remember. I was like, hey, how do I get up on the wall? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he used to tell me, like, you got to be a college All-American. But that's the thing with me. Like, I, when we used to go two-a-days at Cheney, we used to be in the gym lobby, like, taking naps and stuff. But then all of our history and all of our tradition was right there. You see the, the, uh, all the Cheney greats that was, that was up there. And, and you say, okay, you can read their accolades. You can read what they did. And that helped me, inspire me to say, okay, I want to be like this. Can I be the next person? So I took that same concept I did at Cheney and took it to Louisville. Then, um, then so I was honored, ended up honored at Cheney, and I ended up in being honored at Louisville. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was an article I found from the, uh, <clears throat> from the Vindicator. I think you and Ed Mady were recognized um, the same night to uh-huh. go up on the wall, you know, and that and that was a quote. That's exactly what you said. I would walk the, I would walk by the Wall of Fame and wonder what it would be like to be up there amongst some of the greatest athletes uh, in the history of the school, um, you know. So then it comes to pass. Well, I'm always big on like I said. How how do you know what greatness is if you don't look find greatness? And I say, and dealing with our kids now, I think at at the school in the area, I always try to tell them like know what greatness is because where greatness is is here, it's a level. And if you know that, you can try to achieve and pass it, where the kids nowadays doesn't know, and they don't know a lot of the history, so their greatness mark is down here. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't don't become great and be a good player, they're really down here. So if I try to be a great player, I'm up here, and their level is actually down here playing. And I think that was the big thing with me, is knowing what's great. 
knowing what's good, knowing who came in front of me. I remember talking to Ron Renfrey uh, before because he was a, played the same position I did in high school, and he was, uh, uh, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. So it's like, okay, I want to be better than that. I want to be better than him. So he actually pushed me to be better at his position, which was receiver, that I was stepping into the following year. And I think that's that's the thing that I always did. How can I be reach greatness by who's in front of me or what was already established? Mm-hmm. And and so you kind of hit on. And this was one of the things that I wanted to kind of talk about. Um, so you know, Ron leaves in in '06. That's your last year, mm-hmm. right? Um, you have a couple coaches in between there. Then a hiatus. Then. Um, you know, footballs and athletics are brought back, and so you've coached there. Yes. Um, and so what have you tried to kind of um, share or input into some of those athletes that you've had the chance to work with, having played there, been uber successful there, and, and now coaching there? I think the big part of it is, is just letting them know that you can have success coming from Cheney and, and coming from the – the inner city um, I think that was always the stigma like you don't have to go to Hubbard you don't have to go to Fitch you don't have to go to these schools in order to um, be successful um, so I think that's where is and, and really teach them like this is a hard-nosed team that we always had and if you do that and you do the right thing you have opportunity for success and do you was that uh, how, how was that when they cut everything how tough was it to kind of get that, the, the buy-in back or the tradition? Well, it's, or- it's still in a process. I mean, when you look at, um, I always joke with people, I always say, like, Cheney had the, a lot of tradition with pro athletes compared to other schools in the city, um, especially, like I said, on football. And, and more recent, I mean, other schools had players in, in, back in the day and everything else like that. But I think is the, the buy-in. I think one thing that I always said that was I recognize with Cheney itself is our alumni always came back and actually was part of the program. Mm-hmm. Like me and Brad, I think was in college, and we used to go to the same workouts with the team that was playing at that time. So we it showed them players that we believe in Coach Burtis in the system and the program because we're here and we're all Americans and we're still doing the same workout that you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. We trust in what you're doing and it showed them like, hey, if you do this, you can have success too. And I think we just got away from it over the years of that little bit of disconnection of saying like, this is what Cheney football is about. Mm-hmm. This is what buying into the program is about and I mean and unfortunately I think that's also like just football and and a lot of the kids nowadays because even a program like Mooney is struggling because when them kids even going there with all their tradition their state championships yeah they're not buying into Mooney football and what it meant and I think like I said Cheney was the same way so it's still a little struggle getting those um, and, and the other side is we also have to adjust to the kids as well and understand, like, hey, let's start creating your new tradition, your new concept of the new era of the same type of football, though. Like, when I say that, that same hard-nosed football, you might be more of a spread offense or whatever it might be. Uh, uniforms might be different, but you're just a new era of this of what we had. And, and embrace that new era with and allow them to be who they are but still have them understand like you still represent a bigger something bigger than just the 2022 team sure sure um you know you you go on and have a have an nfl career and, and you spend some time um you know any thoughts on on that and and how uh, the experience and maybe some of the connection that you know you've kind of talked about how Cheney set you up for just going on. But what was that NFL experience like? 
It, it was actually, I, I went into a program that was actually a lot like, um, a lot like the programs I was, I was used to. I, I, coach Dungey, um, being the head coach, was an excellent coach. Like his, his thing was so, we're professionals. Like do your job, do your task, you're professionals. I expect you to be there. I remember one day I was, it was early on in the summer of my rookie year, and he was like, "Hey, we don't want you at. If you're dropping to this curl, I don't want you at 11 yards. I don't want you at 13. I want you at 10 yards. I mean, I'm sorry, at 12 yards." And it was just the the technician side of it that that they brought was something that I was used to because I follow the directions, I follow coaching, I followed assignment football coming from Cheney. Mm-hmm. And I think that helped me have success and, and, and helped me in my pro career because I was able to be coachable and, and, and to do the things that they want. I mean, like with me, I was, undra- I was undrafted, so I didn't have the recognition and name to say, hey, I didn't have the same opportunity. So I actually showed that I knew how to play football and you can count on me and you can be someone can be a quality player that that we can keep on the team. And I think I learned all of that from being at Cheney. Yeah, it's um and, and and that was a great organization. Peyton Manning was there at the time and, and you know, you, you uh um pretty neat experience. Oh yeah, I mean you look at we had three almost well in Three Hall of Famers so far. It might end up being four or five on that team. Um, Edron James, Marvin, uh, Marvin Harrison, and um, and Peyton. Peyton. Then you might have Reggie Wayne. Yep, Reggie you Wayne. Might have Dwight Freeney later on. And Tony I mean, Dungy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, then you got Tony Dungy too as well. And it, I mean, when you look at that that staff, I mean, and the way he ran the organization, and well, not the whole organization, but when he ran the team and everything else, it was just a family sense, yeah. like. I went to a team that was older. They had veterans, so it's like you didn't see everybody in there with flashy cars. Like I'm like I pull up in the parking lot, you see a, a, a Chevy Tahoe, you see a pickup truck. Like you don't you didn't see Lamborghinis and stuff like that in the parking lot. I mean, and it was so it was more welcoming with that type of um, organization. So like it was just a more blue collar type organization so I was very comfortable and I just worked on my craft in, in order to try to make the team. Um that that's pretty much all I had. Ron, do you have some final thoughts and things to No, I did uh, well, I mean, you know, Anthony talked about uh, how the tradition influenced and this is what this is all about. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we we want to uh, continue to maintain that and and uh, when 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 you're following people like yourself that are on the wall up there that uh, the McFees and and, and uh, Pochners and Sinkowich and uh, Zordich and Osaski and 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 on and on. Um, um, it, 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 it's, it becomes contagious, and, and it's, it's obvious when, um, you know, uh, to have a player like yourself that came into our program and uh, really transcended it to the next level. I mean, we, we got to a point in the early 90s where we thought, you know, well, we're, 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 we're getting there. And I think when uh, you you and Antoine and the rest of the gang, I don't want, and I don't want to slight anybody, um, uh, r- really really uh, made us a state recognized program. Um, and uh, it, it, it's be- it's all because of belief belief in in the system, belief in the program, and belief in the tradition. I think a lot of it, like, it was no chasing accolades. It wasn't chasing scholarships. It was do your job, and then opportunities came. Yeah. And, and awards came, and, and like I said, being able to go to the playoffs at that time, and and all that came along with 
part of being in the system first, being a, a, a the, and believing with your teammates, then like, cause it takes other people to have success. Like, so if I, if it wasn't people blocking for my brother to throw me the ball, I wouldn't have success. So it was, it was trusting your teammates and it was everybody expecting to do their job. And like I said, success comes from that. Yeah. And you know what, what, what I find pretty neat and Ron, you can, you can agree or disagree, but like, you know, we've had probably two of the more successful players um, in recent history sit down and talk. And, like, Keelan, just like you, you know, like, very humble, taking the light off of them, dropping other guys' names and talking about just team and, and coaches. And I think, like, for me, that's that's the character piece of real success is in, in anything, is is not looking from that lens of, how can people help me? But, you know, how can I help the team? How can I help others? And and I think that's just, I don't know, that's a refreshing characteristic that I, I don't know we see all the time now. So, um, you know, that's just that's just me as a man saying, you know, I appreciate the humbleness and humility that, that you guys have. It's just pretty. Well, a lot of it, when you look at when we used to break down, it was Cheney Pride. I mean, that's really what it was and, and your teammates because – if one person didn't do something right, we all ran. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. like, it, it was like, so you didn't want to make a mistake for your teammates. Yeah. And I think, like I said, because nobody got on anybody else for not doing the things correctly. So it, it, it became family. It became brothers um, with that. And I think that it was, that helped push that when you talk about playing at Cheney. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't help it because you you're around everybody who embraced a, a program and organization and your success just came from a result from that. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on and doing it. I oh, think I'm glad uh, you had me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um like Ron said, you know, it's just about the tradition and experiences and, and continuing that and capturing it. So um appreciate it. Yeah, so just Hopefully coach, uh, coach me up on the golf course um, <laughs> a, a little bit. <laughs>